hi guys it's another friday and another time with me on my youtube channel Welcome again to another episode of The Lightroom. My name is Chisum. If you don't know that already and if this is your first time here, I'm super glad that you found this channel. Let me know how you found this channel, what video brought you here or who brought you here. Let me know in the comment section and I hope you subscribe and like this video before you leave today or tonight whenever you're watching this. So over the past month, I've been talking about Christian devotion, particularly prayer. I've done about four videos leading to this video on prayer and it's so important because it's a vital aspect of our lives as believers. One thing that I have said all through the videos in one shape or form is that prayer is communication with God. And over the past three weeks, we've zoomed in on how to pray, how to communicate with the Lord, how to pray long, how to bring your questions to the Lord in prayer. So this week, we'll be looking at the other side. Of prayer hearing from God so some of you are familiar already if you watch the videos on how to talk to the Lord which is a great thing but if prayer is communication that means you should hear from the Lord every time you pray or consistently at least so um, this video is going to address how you can hear from the Lord number one b before I even um, give you practical tips that have helped me tips I've seen in scripture things I've learned from people that have gone ahead of me. I'm just going to share some common misconceptions or just get some things out of the way before we get into that. So first and foremost, we need to realize that God in his kindness and sovereignty can speak to anybody at any time and in any way. We see this scattered all over scripture where God spoke even to unbelievers. Classic example, Abimelech the king who took Sarah Abraham's wife. Guys, I got to this time. It's Abraham, no Moses. <laughs> uh, so King Abimelech who took Abraham's wife to himself and the Lord spoke to Abimelech and asked him to return Sarah to Abraham. Abimelech was a pagan king. He did not know the God of Israel or worship him at that time before you know hearing from him to return Abraham's wife to him. So God could speak to a pagan king and stop him from making such a mistake. It just makes me wonder, as a child of God, why do we then fear sometimes? Why do I then fear sometimes that somehow I'll be about to make a mistake and the Lord will not reach out to me or call out to me? If he could do that for a pagan king on behalf of his child, Abraham, he can do it for me. He can very well do it for me and he can do it for you. Another example, that you see in scripture is Balaam, 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 Balaam. <laughs> so he was a prophet and then a king had asked him to curse the people of Israel and God did not let him do that. God spoke to him to speak blessings over the people of Israel instead of curses. He was not an Israelite prophet. He was not part of the people of Israel, but God still spoke to Balaam on behalf of the children of Israel. So you can see a common theme among these two people on behalf of his children God spoke to unbelievers so if he can speak to unbelievers who did not pray to him for direction who did not care to have a relationship with him how much more you another example that I, I want to share is in the New Testament I'll just share two of them at the same time we have Paul on the way to Damascus he was going to kill Christians, he was going with his zeal to persecute Christians, but he encountered Jesus on the way. And we all know the story of Paul on the way to Damascus. It was such a beautiful story. But Paul at that time was not even a Christian, yet the Lord spoke to him. And from there began the beautiful conversion story of Paul. We see another story of Cornelius in scripture. Cornelius was a good man, but he did not have the Holy Ghost. He did not. He wasn't saved at the time. And he just goes to share that it's not your goodness that saves you, honestly. Because if Cornelius' goodness was enough for salvation, there would be no need for him to call Peter to share the gospel with him as he received in the instruction from the Lord. So God spoke to Cornelius 
and then the whole drama with Peter, which even leads me to another thing of how God leads. He could lead you through dreams. It's very possible. I know some dreams that we have, they get as it be. It's because maybe you watched Vampire Diaries <laughs> for too long, or you watched the uh, Snake on the Plane, or one other weird movie, and that's why you are having weird dreams. But there are times where the Lord can lead you through dreams. We see the story of Peter and how God directed him to Cornelius through a dream. Now, in the African space, if someone has a dream that they were eaten in the dream, a lot of people will be scared and say, hey, that's bad. You should not eat in your dream. Yeah, initiating you. And while we've seen some true stories that have happened where, you know, um, there were demonic influences in a person's dream and person aids in the dream and all of that. It's not a one size fit all interpretation to dreams because if we're going by what has happened in scripture that we can rely on, when Peter ate in the dream, was God had asked him to eat? He was not being initiated or anything. But Sarah, we are not talking about dreams today. Other ways that the Lord can lead you, He can lead you through His messengers. We saw this commonly with people of Israel. They would um, tell the people God's counsel on a thing. They would lead the people. We see how Moses led the people from Egypt to the promised land. I mean, he didn't eventually get to the promised land. Joshua did. But, I mean, we see how God could use his messengers, his servants, to lead us, to instruct us. And in today's world, it translates as um getting wise counsel from a spiritual leader your pastor a deacon someone that is in spiritual authority over you we see that happen today um we see that happen through sermons it's so interesting how there are many hurdles we don't have to cross if we give ourselves to edification regularly because what I've just found to happen is that sometimes when I'm going through a phase or trying to figure out some things about my spiritual growth or even my life personally, somehow it just sinks with the teaching for that Sunday. And I'm like, okay, okay, that was a question I was not asking and you've answered. If you surround yourself with edification, it will be easier for you to hear God's counsel for a matter. So let's go into the uh, crux of this video. How can you hear from the Lord? Number one, anticipate hearing from the Lord. Anticipate it. If you don't anticipate it, you may you may miss when the Lord is even speaking to you. Anticipate it. Anticipate to hear God's voice. If God can speak to sinners who do not ask to hear his voice, who do not ask for his directions, if God can speak to people in the midst of their wrong, Think about it, King David had just killed Uriah. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba, and yet God still spoke to him through Prophet Nathan. So many times we feel like because of um, one imperfection in our lives or some things we've done wrong, God cannot speak to us. It's not a case that God cannot speak to us. Many times our senses are dulled because of what has happened. Our senses are dulled because of what we've exposed ourselves to. And I'll get to that before the end of the video. But my number one point, anticipate hearing from God. How I do this is by having a journal by me every time I pray or when I'm in a prayer meeting. Because if I believe that God is going to speak to me, I don't want to pen it down. I don't want to forget what he's saying to me. So I'm always with a journal. And if for some reason I'm not with my journal, maybe I'm just taking a walk and, and I'm praying to the Lord or just worshiping on the road during my walk or even at the gym, I have notes on my, on my phone. So I'll just take a, a note down. This is what the Lord said to me and I'll put the dates. If it's an instruction, I mean, I'll earmark it and be sure that Somehow I investigate into that instruction. Investigating just means that I'll pray more about it to get clarity on what the Lord is saying. But I, I note it down. I note it down. And I found that sometimes when I'm writing those words down, they may not make perfect sense to me. But over time, I've gotten used to how God speaks to me. So I know when he speaks to me. So I pen them down. Over time, it gets clearer. Over time, it gets more. It makes more sense to me another way that i've seen that we can miss god's leadings is if we are constantly chasing 
a spectacular move. It's a given that God spoke to Moses through the burning bush, but that only happened once. The other times that God wanted to speak to, the boy and to Moses, he did not um, bring a burning bush to Moses. Imagine all the times that Moses was praying to the Lord, he was expecting to see a burning bush. Maybe he would not have let children of Israel out the way he did. Think about it this way. If God is your father, think about your earthly father. There are times where there will be family meeting. Your daddy must tell you something serious. And he will call you and say, say sit down, my child. I have something to tell you. And then he'll be talking to you, you know, telling you all the things that you need to hear. But if your father has to call a family meeting every time he needs your attention, then there's something wrong. Is either you don't used to hear what or you you run away from his normal conversations like it, it's 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 odd that your dad will speak to you in a spectacular manner every time let me give another example when i want to you know spend quality time with my husband i'm not sure some people are tired of missing my husband my husband is called it's not i'm not no vex <laughs> anyway so when I want to spend some quality time with my husband, I will go out with him. Like we could go out somewhere to eat and then we will talk. And when we go out those times, I, I prefer to dress up because I mean, how many times do I go out? I work remotely and hardly ever need to go anywhere. So I dress up and I go out with my husband and I dress all fancy. We eat in a nice place and we talk, 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 and then we go back home at the end of the day. Would it make sense if the only time my husband could get my attention was in those fancy settings? No. Sometimes we have the most vulnerable conversations late at night or during the day when maybe we've not even freshened up. We are just talking on the bed, just talking. Very vulnerable moments come up in, in that period. So if I'm waiting for a fancy dinner date with my husband, to communicate with him, I would miss out on so many other beautiful moments. In the same vein, if you are waiting for a spectacular vision or a loud clang from heaven to know that God is speaking to you, you may have missed out all he's saying. I'll show you an example from scripture in um, 1 Kings 19. The back story is Elijah had done the whole demonstration with the prophets of Baal and then Jezebel was so angry with him so he ran away Yada yada. So now in First Kings 19, the Lord went, was speaking to Elijah and he said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence. At that moment, the Lord passed by. Then they're describing what happened. A great and mighty wind was tearing at the mountains and shattering cliffs before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. Just pause and think about the description of this wind. It was tearing the mountains. Not brick wall or, or wood, mountains, stones. It was tearing the mountains and shattering cliffs before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. Earthquake! So you, if it was earthquake that would happen, you say, God, your mighty demonstrations before me. And it is a mighty demonstration of the Lord. But it said, after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire fire some people you won't go to answer you by fire all the time see fire after the earthquake there was fire but the lord was not in the fire after the fire there was a voice a soft whisper when elijah heard it he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave then the voice came to him and said what are you doing here elijah now god is majestic so when he's going to speak to you or when he wants to demonstrate something to you, it's possible to see all these marvelous signs around you. But at the end of the day, the communication to Elijah came as a voice, the Lord speaking, the Lord speaking. And it's something to learn. In chasing the spectacular, you may miss the supernatural. That's something I learned very profoundly from Pastor Oge in, I think, 2020. In chasing a very grand way for the Lord to speak to you, you may miss that soft whisper. You may miss that confirmation in your heart, just that knowing that this is what God will have you do. You may miss that conversation with a friend that's supposed to spoil you up to what God will have you do. I found that many times 
people that God spoke to in scripture did not dictate how God should speak to them. I mean, there are the cases of um, Gideon setting the fleece and all of that. But many times, people in scripture did not dictate how God was going to speak to them. Moses did not say, God, speak to me through a burning bush. Peter did not say, God, speak to me through a dream. God in his sovereignty can use any means possible to get your attention. But if he always has to use a spectacular means to get your attention, then something is wrong. You're not being sensitive to him. The last thing I would share is on paying attention. Paying attention to the Lord. I was reading a book by Dr. Dale Fife a couple of days ago, and he described a scenario where, like, cholesterol can block your arteries and flow of blood to your heart. It's the same way prayerlessness and secularism can dull your senses to hearing from God. So it's not a case that God is not speaking to you. It's a case where um, God is speaking, but you are just surrounded with so much noise you can't hear. Classic example, as I'm recording this video now, I don't know where they are doing drilling work, whether it's outside this building or somewhere. Since before, I, when I was sleeping, they did not do the drilling work. When, <laughs> when I was sleeping, they did not do the drilling work. Before I recorded the video, they did not do the drilling work. And what usually happens is that once I finish recording this video, they will now stop. Anyway, <laughs> if we were outside where the drilling was happening and I was whispering to you, you may not really hear me. And it doesn't mean I'm not speaking. If you go to a party and you sit beside your friend and your friend is talking to you, it doesn't mean, and you can't hear, it doesn't mean that your friend is not speaking. It means that place is so loud and you can't hear. So what should happen in that case is if you can't control the volume, you turn it down. If you can't control the volume, you walk out of the place and have that conversation with your friend. Ah, hello, Ashimo, they've stopped their drilling. I hope you don't hear it. I hope you don't hear it, but yeah. They stopped their dream. I mean, did I speak too soon? They stopped it. They stopped it. So, see, maybe it's in line with this thing I'm sharing with you people. But seriously, we are distracted many times. We are not ready to hear. Sometimes you just want the alarm to ring and your prayer time should move and then you vanish. You're not paying attention. And maybe that's why you've not heard from the Lord. How can you pay better attention? Discipline. Prayer is discipline. I'll say it again and again and again. One thing I said doing, I've been doing for a couple of years now, is when I pray, I give time at the end where I'm not necessarily saying anything. Where I'm just, you know, sitting and listening. Like, God, what, do you, what would you have me do? What would you want me to do in this situation? Is there something you want to tell me? And I just sit still. Sometimes I don't hear anything, honestly, in that period but when i stand up like later on and i have to do other things the voice just comes and i just know what to do or i just hear clearly in my spirit what i'm supposed to do and sometimes it comes through a confirmation conversation quote unquote like the conversation i had with my friend monica a couple of weeks ago so pay attention give yourself to listening from the lord because he does speak he really does speak don't think you are any less a believer because you've never heard a spectacular voice or you've never seen an angel by your bedside or you've never you know heard the wind or the cloud all of that don't don't think that you're any less a christian those things are just marvelous acts of the lord and they do not even never see them in your lifetime does not mean you do not have a great relationship with the Lord. If you desire it, I mean, you could pray to the Lord, Lord, you know, just do something spectacular for me. Maybe when I go for this prayer meeting, let them call my name supernaturally or something like that. But if those things never, ever happen, it doesn't mean that you cannot hear from God. And it doesn't mean something is wrong with your relationship with the Lord. I've come to the end of this video this week. You may have questions from all I've shared. I want you to note your questions down in the comment section. I will go through and answer your questions either by a comment or a brand new video. But my prayer for you this week is you grow in your relationship with the Lord and you learn to hear his voice better and better and better. Have a lovely week, guys. I love you all.
Bye. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.